What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'm actually going to be covering something that has recently come up. I've got this issue. So, I have a problem. So as you can clearly see, my truck's not going to start. It's kind of a problem. So I went ahead and I did what I normally do. I checked to see if my fuel pump's bad and the three signs. Um, you got look, listen, feel. All right, you look at all the fuses, check to see if they're all good to go. Listen so to whenever you turn the key on, you open up your gas tank like this and then you turn the key on and you put your ear to here. Don't put your nose in there, okay? Put your ear to it and listen for the high whine of the fuel pump. And then you also wanna feel, that's uh, number three, you wanna feel for the, the click of your start pump, um, for your fuel pump relay. Unfortunately for this truck, I can only do two out of the three uh, listed. Uh, I was able to check all the fuses. All my fuses are good. Uh, checked inside the truck. I mean, I, I can't really find any fuses in there. Um, and on this particular model, this is a 2007 Dodge Ram. This is what they call a TI, TIPM or total, totally independent processing module. I think that's what it means, but it's TIPM. All right, so whenever you go to pop this thing off, you're really supposed to be able to see a whole bunch of resistor, not resistors, uh, fuses and relays, but that's not the case. Uh, the only thing that's in here is just a, a bunch of fuses. I don't see any relays. So uh, what I'm thinking, it's very possible, the relay I'm looking for is probably underneath underneath here I've never taken this apart before so if uh, if changing out the fuel pump on this truck does not work I will have to take this thing apart and uh, see if I can find the relay that's on the inside <clears throat> um, and to take this thing off you got you pull back on this tab and this one over here is fine pull back on this tab and just lift up and the whole thing just slides up like so and you get a whole caboodle of wires up in here but we're not going to get into that today all right as far as i know everything here under the hood is good to go so uh what i'm going to do first is uh i'm going to change out of my my work clothes or because i'm up here at work right now uh, i'm going to change out of my clothes get into some scrubs um, and I'm gonna mount this camera on my head and record me taking the actual tank out from under the truck now a good thing about this is <laughs> okay uh, power let's put the power on you want to try to make sure that you have an empty tank and not a full one see mine I barely have any fuel in there maybe like two gallons in there and it says, uh, it says 53 miles to empty. So that's approximately two and a half, almost three gallons of fuel. So whenever I go to drop the actual tank out from under the truck, it's not going to be heavy. Uh, so therefore, I won't have to bench press a, a fuel um, a fuel tank. <laughs> uh, I've had to do that before, and that was not fun. Uh I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I've got enough ground clearance because the truck has a high stance. So I'm going to be taking the two straps down below uh, and some other things. So what I'm going to do first is uh, let's go change clothes and then I'll get right in it. 
All right, so let me just lay this under here. Like so. That's the tank right there. Lay this down and unroll it. And Oscar, if you're watching this, thank you uh, for letting me have a part of your carpet because that greatly helps. Uh, penetrating oil. This is going to be going on the bolts. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, note to self. Next time doing stuff like this, uh, bring safety glasses. I don't know how long those bolts have been on there, but it's safe to say it's never been messed with. All right, before you start disconnecting stuff and purging anything, take the negative off the battery. Again, take the negative off the battery before you do anything to the truck. Like internals, like dropping the tank or anything under the engine. Disconnect the negative on the battery. 10 millimeter. Yep, 10 mil. This is gonna be a pain in the neck. Okay, so that was not easy. Just, okay, grab this. Grab the hose and pull. I mean, just just pull it away. Oh wow! Crawl up underneath this truck. Where is it? Power control. See, my fuel pump is right here. Uh, what is this? A dust cover. <laughs> All right. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower this tank now. I should be able to do it without any issues. Probably I really can't seal too well. And for that, I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Crawling up underneath this truck. It's not what I wanted to be doing today. We're gonna lower, like I said, the tank, but we gotta break these loose. I'm using three eighths. Oh wow. Okay. So it's on there good. Go ahead and break this one loose. So we're going to speed this up a little bit. I don't know if this is going to work here, but it worked back here. I got myself a couple extensions and I got crafty. <laughs> and I mean, you can just just run that run that screw down as far as it'll go, like down to the very like second to last thread. Oh no, you don't want to drop it entirely though. Don't do that. Oh crap. No, 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 no. Oh, come here. <laughs> You're out of the way. Out of my reach. All right, yeah. You want to keep it like on the last three threads or so. Because that tank will fall a little bit. That's what you want. All right, so we're going to do this. I'm going to see if. Let's see if I got it off enough. I'll show you guys what it hit. I don't know if it'll reach yet. Oh, beautiful. I moved it right along. All right. After some messing around, I've been under here for about uh, 30 minutes or so. I got this dust cover off, and that dust cover covered the pump. That right there, that white cap that you see. 
Now there's a couple of connections we had to take off, <coughs> which I haven't finished. But there's a hose up there, and there's the clip. <clears throat> and there's a couple other things I do need to disconnect. So I'm gonna disconnect the uh, the stuff up front, and then I'm gonna go ahead and drop the tank. Wish me luck. Okay, so I'm pretty sure this is the most difficult way to do it. But unfortunately, it's the only way I can do it right now. To access all the stuff on top. All those clips that were up there uh, were kind of a pain in the ass to get to. But I think I got it. So I'm going to go ahead and slowly drop it. Slide my hips out from under it. All that fuel should go to the back. Oh my god. Alright. Oh man. Oh cool, they got handles on top of these. That's helpful. Let's get my legs out from under. Oh man. Come on. That feed line out from under it. Now, to get this thing out from underneath the truck. <laughs> and with a little bit of persuasion, you can get it out. <laughs> so, let's see if I can persuade my way to work this thing out. Come on. That. It's not going to work according to plan. Probably never will. Move forward. Try not to break clips and stuff. Let's see if I can slide this out. Come to daddy. Yeah, just slide it out here. Come here. I am a bad man. All right, so you wiggle the tank out just enough and have it right here at the crack of the truck where the cab meets the bed. You just wiggle it and wiggle, wiggle. You can get it to where you can access that pump straight up and down to install the new one, I believe. So I'm gonna go ahead and break this lock ring loose and then uh, swap out the pump. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me explain something to you. All right, before you go to take this lock ring off, there's two things I need you to know. All right, first is how to take the lock ring off, and second, before you take the lock ring off, you need to clear this area. Get all that debris away from here, because once you pop this open, now you're complete access to the inside of this tank, and the last thing you want is any dirt or any debris getting inside your tank, because when it gets inside the tank, then it gets sucked up in your pump, and then, by some miracle of life, it makes it through all the filters and gets inside your engine and you're gonna hate yourself. So, clean the area, vacuum it, wipe it down. I didn't have any water, but I had WD-40, so I wiped it all down. Now, whenever you go to pop these lock rings off, you'll notice you got a groove one, which is where the locks go, and groove two, There's a little bit of holes on the outside. All right? You wanna take them and pop them. See that, how it turns it? And be careful because it might spring up. Yep, just like that. Now these, I just popped it off, but I did that to show you guys how it's supposed to happen. However, it's not how it always works. Uh, you might actually need to put a little extra effort into it. <sighs> so, let's go ahead and pull this out. And I pull it straight up. There's going to be some debris, some debris all around it. And there will be fuel still inside the pump reservoir. So you gotta be careful when you pull it out. All right, folks. Uh, I know you saw me struggling with that earlier, but Brett had come up here and uh, he lent me a hand. And it turns out you do need a jack to lift it up at least an extra three inches so you can get the rest of the tank out. But I have yet to 
get this sucker out. I think this is an aftermarket. I think it's very possible. He's wondering who I'm talking to. But I don't know. It's uh I mean they got it in there. I don't know how they got this sucker in there. Come on. How in the world? You know what? I think they they like smashed this one in there. They had to. I tried. That's a, that's the thing. It it doesn't work that way. You see how that lip just hangs on the inside? I can do this. Move back some. Then I get that problem. Is there you know what? There you just take off. And that screwdriver. Okay. Right there. You put the new thing like that too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, try to flex it just a wee bit. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull up just a smidge. We'll pull back on that yeah, lip. Down, go, huh? This is the old one anyway. Oh, come on. You get chunks in there, so you get fucking. Oh, There's a part of it, and you just work it around. Come on, get out. Almost there. Get out. I'm sure this is not the ideal way to remove this. But that's how I'm going to be able to get this one out. Aha! I got it. Here's the old one. And this is what it's supposed to look like. This is what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, they had bought the wrong one. New O-ring, new float. What else? That's it. All right, so comparison, the differences. Well, there's instructions. Anyway, the differences. The differences are Wow, that's quite a few. I mean, you can clearly see how, how different they are. Same connections up top. See if you, if you line it up just right. Same connections, but different configuration. That's why mine was so difficult to get out. So I had to get it past this damn ledge right here. So, anyway, let's go ahead and drop this one down inside of the truck. And, uh,. Get it all remounted. But before I do that, <sighs> I'm gonna read the instructions. Let me make sure I get this right. These are not instructions, so apparently I'm gonna get it wrong. Fantastic. Good job, Scott. All right, I uh, got the whole rim here all cleaned out. Now it's time to put the silicone uh, gasket in here. So you lay that down like so, and then grab the new pump and install it so come here no camera yep say how do you too brett <laughs> all right so put the float in first and i'm getting a phone call and that is how it's supposed to go in there And you push it straight down. It's spring loaded. Remember that. And lay this, the lock ring over it. Remember those grooves. Locks it in place. All right, and then you just refer, reverse everything that I just showed you guys. I'm not going to show you guys how to put it back on. 
because there's no point in it. I just showed you. Bigger hammer, Dave. <laughs> right? And that's it. If I'm not mistaken, probably won't work if luck. That's a winner. All right, now put everything all back together, reverse everything, and reinstall it back in the truck. I'm not going to show you guys how to do that stuff because you already saw me fight to get it back out. Uh, so it's time to install it. Okay. This morning, time I'm